Hi, my name is Katie Crooks. I'm a Public Programs Coordinator at the Smithsonian American Art Museum and Renwick Gallery. One of the programs I coordinate, Handy Hour, features craft activities for adults. And the activity I want to share with you today from Handy Hour is needle felting. For needle felting, you can make a variety of different projects, and today I'm going to show you how to make a small little shape or creature. Here, um, a simple flower. Um, here we have a teddy bear, a heart. Um, these are just felted balls or little circles that can easily be made into something later, like the very small felted balls on these earrings. Um, here we put a pin back onto this heart so we've made a brooch and then we also have today's project which is this little owl. How to make our little owl felted creature. First you got to gather together the necessary materials. You'll need a felting needle which is actually a very sharp needle. You need to pay very careful attention when you are needle felting. Um, when you feel the end of the needle, don't ever prick your finger on it but you can kind of um, pinch upwards on it, you'll feel that it has little notches cut out. These notches grab the fibers in the roving wool, which is the fiber that we'll use to create these shapes. They catch the fibers and intertwine them with each other so that you end up having one stable form. So felting needle, roving wool, and I have a variety of colors. I'm going to be starting with a light pink, so we'll be creating this purple owl today but we'll be starting with some pink and some other colors for accents and a foam mat. Um, places do also sell brush mats as well. You need this to protect your surface as well as to protect your needle. It's not uncommon to break needles when you're first learning how to needle felt. They're very thin and very fragile. But if you're slow and careful, you shouldn't have any problems. So to get started, you're gonna take your felt, like this pink here, and you're gonna pull it apart so that the fibers get really mixed around, almost like creating a big, messy, puffy cloud of string. And then once you've done that, go ahead and take it and kind of start to ball it together, roll it around into approximately the shape that you want to have. So not exactly the same, but a comparable lump, I would say. Take it, holding your pieces together, put it down on the mat, and then you're going to essentially poke the roving wool continuously until it starts to hold its shape. When you do this, make sure you're poking up and down directly. If you twist the needle or go at weird angles, you're more likely to break it. Start slow at first, and then as you get comfortable, build up speed. Watch your fingers, though. Um, I highly recommend um, getting a thimble um, before you get started if you're a novice, as that can help protect your finger from very painful pinpricks. Um, there are also many websites that sell special gloves and finger guards made specifically for needle felting. So if you have a bad injury and you want to protect yourself further, that is a good place to go. After you've poked for a while, Pull your project up, you'll notice that the fibers stick to the mat. That's normal. You'll just want to kind of flip it over and start poking at a different location. So you do this, and I haven't been doing it that long, and you'll notice it's not loose anymore. It's kind of holding itself together. And all you have to do is just keep pulling those fibers back to about the shape you want and poking them together. Only go as fast with the poking as you are comfortable to avoid injury. If pieces are loose, like here, pay a little bit more attention to them. Lift up your work frequently so it doesn't stick to the mat. And slowly but surely, you're gonna start to form a solid lump of fiber. Now, I'll keep doing this until I get a shape that's roughly like this yellow one that I have here. 
so for this one, all I did is to create the little bumps in that go around kind of those ears of your owl, I just poked on the center continuously and eventually a crease started to form. And that's what I did on the sides too. I just poked in several additional times and creases formed to create those shapes. If you have lots of extra hairs kind of sticking out, you can swirl your needle around and poke them directly into the piece. So as you're getting closer and closer to that finished piece, you can do those little bitty finishing pokes. Then the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is start adding these decorative features on the front. So to show you how to do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of this red. I don't even need that much. A little bit of roving wool goes a long way. Take it and do the same thing, only with a much smaller quantity that you did when forming this larger lump. Fold it in on itself to make a circular-like shape. It does not need to be perfect. And put it about where you want it on your shape. And then poke it. As you're doing this, the fibers from the red are going into the fibers of the yellow. They're intermingling with one another and condensing down so that now this piece is attached. It won't fall off. So you keep doing this until it gets a shape that you like. And you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm taking these wisps and I'm guiding them to where I want them to be with the needle. And the more you poke, the more condensed it'll be and the more solid it will look. So I'm gonna grab with the needle, careful not to strain the needle or twist it or poke at a weird angle so I don't break it. And I'm trying to form it so all these loose edges come together to make a nice smooth round shape to represent the belly or chest of the owl. Then, once you get a number of the pieces in, I have this little guy that I've already started. He has his belly piece done in black. He has an eye done in orange, and then we have, or a nose in orange and an eye in pink. So I was gonna show you how to do the pupil of the eye to give you a little bit of a detail example. Um, let's say we do the eye in purple, since he has a black belly, and you need just a teeny tiny bit of wool and you'll roll it together with your fingers. This is actually probably a little too much, but we'll give it a try. Put it about where you want it, and then just poke it into place, grabbing the fibers as you go. So that it all gets stuck in the proper area on the eye. So this owl, is going to have very big pupils. Perhaps his eyes are dilated, but owls have great night vision, so that's not unrealistic. And there you go. Now he has his eye done. All I have to do is continue that for the rest of the pieces. A bigger pink circle on this side, and then another piece of felt about the same size for the pupil, and you end up with a little guy who ends up looking like this and that's how you needle felt. And if you want, you can felt directly onto prefabricated felt like this piece here. You simply took pieces of felt of, and put roving wool on top and poked into it and it makes a nice coaster, um, which is easily done by taking just a little bit. Here I have preformed felt with the roving wool on top and if I poke that strip it will incorporate it into the felt so that it won't come off and you can create designs on pieces of prefabricated felt as well. The backs do start to look a little fuzzy as the fibers from the front are pushed through the piece of felt into the back. 
um, but not really noticeable if it's on the bottom. And that's how you needle felt. Thanks. Thank you.